Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into this NGWA Water Well Journal video interview called Catching Up. This is Mike Price, Senior Editor of NGWA's Water Well Journal, and today I'm speaking with Gary Shaver, Master Groundwater Contractor, President of Shaver Well Company, Inc. in Fredericksburg, Iowa. And we're going to be discussing advancements of today, today's drilling rig and practical steps uh, and tips to extend the life of your rig. Shaver has been in the water well industry for 40 years and is semi-retired, having sold his business to his employees. He writes a bi-monthly column for Waterwell Journal titled Drawing from the Well. With September's Waterwell Journal focusing on heavy machinery, we thought it would be a good time to catch up with Gary. Welcome, Gary. Thanks for your time. You, you bet, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So to begin with, uh, let's uh, talk about basic tips. Um, what are some basic tips you can share for someone who is looking to purchase a new drill rig or other piece of heavy machinery? Well, I think the first thing that's really important, Mike, is to keep an open mind of what you're looking for. You know, while you may have a preconceived notion of what you want, um, don't assume that uh, what you want is best for you. Um, just to give an example, a few years ago, um, we were looking to buy a skid loader, a uh, heavier duty one, and the skid loader that we wanted was going to take nine months to get and we couldn't wait. So we looked at other manufacturers and uh, uh, we bought one that uh, we were given a two week trial on and found that we really liked it. And since that time, we bought another one and frankly, like it better than the other skid loaders that we were, were using previously. So. I guess where I'm saying is just make sure that uh, you try to keep an open mind of, even though you may think you have a drill rig or a piece of equipment that you may want to go with, um, keep an open mind what's out in the market and take a look at everything because you're spending a lot of money. And I realize it takes time to uh, away from work to look at different pieces of equipment and to, to research it, but um, you want what's best for, that works for you. Right. Um, you know, every driller has a protocol of how they drill and what they do, and, and that's a good starting point for looking at a piece of drill equipment. Um, and then I would ask the manufacturers um, about their equipment, and if possible, uh, visit a site where um, one similar to what you want is working. Uh, I did that years ago uh, when, when I bought one of my first rigs, and uh, I learned a lot not only from observing the rig on the site, but I also learned a lot of tips from the drillers that were operating the equipment. And some of those tips I actually took back and, and, uh, and used in my business and, and still do to this day. So um, just keep an open mind about, I guess to sum it up, keep an open mind of what, uh, what you really want and, uh, and look around and spend some time because you are spending a lot of money and you wanna make sure you're getting what's right for you. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Um, you shared in the you shared how in the past you've uh, worked directly with the manufacturer to make the modifications needed for your equipment. Uh, what advice can you share for those needing to do the same? Well, realize again, as I said, you're making a huge investment, and these investments aren't getting any cheaper. And as time goes along, they're they're getting more and more expensive. And for some of you, it may be the first time that you bought a piece of equipment and you may not make this type of investment again in your lifetime. So you need to make sure you get it right. And when I made my modifications to my rigs with the drill manufacturer, I did so to improve the efficiency of, of my operation to cut down on wasted time. You know, the more that you can spend drilling and the less time doing all other functions, that don't produce money, the more profitable you'll be. So I tried to uh, put things onto my rig or make changes to my rig that I felt would improve my efficiency so that I didn't waste a lot of time on the job or the, or the drillers under me would not waste a lot of time on the job. So for example, just to give you a little idea of what I'm talking about, if you have a mud air rotary drill rig and, uh, and if you're switching from mud to air, and especially if you're in a winter operation like we are, where you have to winterize your drill string at the end of every day so your mud doesn't freeze in your piping, 
you always have to switch the air to blow it out. And at the end of the day, this is a cumbersome, tire, tiring job that, you know, most people don't want to jump in to do. So what we did is we made some modifications to simply switch from mud to air with a flipping of a couple valves so we didn't have to change those hoses back and forth and then have to change them back in the morning. So that's one, one example. And, and another example that I can suggest is, you know, every drill rig manufacturer um, has a basic table that they have for their rig that is functional for, you know, a typical drilling operation. But every time we started our holes for drilling, sometimes they were different from one hole to the next, just depending on what we were doing. So we mod our, modified our table with uh, different bushings and different openings to facilitate that. And um, these modifications also helped us get the hole straight. We, we built stabilizers in to work with the, with the table and the bushings. And since that time, we've, we've, uh, every drill we bought new, we've made this modification to the drill and somehow tweaked it every time we've, uh, we've made a change. And, uh, so you need to build into your rig these things that are going to enhance your particular operation. And I would suggest maybe sitting down with the manufacturers and talking to them a little bit about what some of the modifications are that other drillers have done. And we, in fact, did that and then took some of those modifications that other drillers have done and, and incorporated them to that, into uh, our rigs as well. Mm -hmm. And I would probably tell you over the time of of getting different rigs built, we've probably had at least 10 to 12 modifications in every rig that were custom modifications. And we did this simply because the drill rig manufacturer has the ability to do them much more efficiently than we do and to get it right at the at the manufacturer as opposed to uh, for us trying to modify the rig. You know, when we got the rig, we wanted to spend time drilling, not spend time modifying the rig. So these are some of those tips that I can suggest uh, in that regard, Mike. Very good. Okay. Um, and for the most part, were the manufacturers, you know, receptive to all your requests? You know, some were and some weren't. And um, and frankly, uh, what it boiled down to, Mike, was uh, went with the manufacturer that was willing to make those modifications. Um, some said, well, "Well, we'll send it to the dealer and let them make the modifications." And we just felt comfortable that we went with a rig manufacturer that would make them at the plant where they had the engineering skills and ability to make sure that it was engineered right so that there was no safety issues, um, um, you know, coupled with that. So we finally just uh, settled on a manufacturer that was willing to make those and uh, and told us any risk that they could see in, in, in making those changes. But for the most part, they were very willing to make them and, uh, and uh, actually kept a lot of those records on, on their, uh, computer for future rigs that we purchased. And all we had to do then was pull them up. And if we wanted to tweak them from uh, a past rig that we had, they could do that uh, very quickly. So it was a situation where we developed a very good relationship with them and, uh, and, and it continues to this day. Great. Okay. Um, well, moving on then to new technology is uh, transfer transforming how today's drill rigs are operated. In your estimation, which one do you think has the most potential to positively impact the industry? Well, the, the, the changes to drill rigs um, are gonna exponentially increase with the advance of technology. And for a lot of the early years in my, my career, the changes were you know minor from year to year, uh, but with an advance of technology, they're, they're increasing exponentially. But the one that I think that I see that uh, is going to be a great asset is the ability to electronically control hydraulic pumps and motors. Um, you can tweak those hydraulic pumps and motors to, to meet your specific needs. And for example, if you have a newer, younger driller um, that's gonna be operating this rig and, and uh, He's learning. You may want to tweak some of the some of the hydraulic pumps back to uh, minimize the force and power that they have. And conversely, if you have an experienced driller, you may want to tweak them to increase it to the point that uh, it gives them the extra power that they need because of their skill level to get these things done. 
So that's one thing that I see is, is a ability to tweak that. Um, in addition, technology has allowed, uh, allowed us to now uh, have phone systems hooked up if you want to some of these drill rigs. The manufacturers can phone in and look at the, look at the rig and ascertain where a problem is existing in your system Wow. and uh, tell you in a nutshell what you need to do to repair it or maybe in, all they need to do is uh, make an adjustment online uh, through their phone system to uh, to tweak that issue that you have or or adjust it so these are just two of the uh, two of the things that i see but i think the, both of these are enhancements that's going to really help especially as the equipment becomes more complicated i think the ability to have the manufacturer uh, jump right into your system over the phone is going to be uh, really great. They don't have to make a field trip out there to, to check things out, save you a lot of money, and they can tell you in a heartbeat what it needs and, and possibly either get the parts coming right away or, as I said, again, maybe make the adjustment uh, over the phone to get the rig to, to correct the problem that it's having. Sure. Well, one, one last thing, Mike, I might mention is that I know that is coming or has been implemented in some of the rigs is uh, is ability to feature the weight control on the bits and uh, knowing what your weight control on the bits in the past has been a more of an art by the driller with experience to, to know where he should run the run the weight. Um, all oil field uh, rigs do have weight indicators to tell them how much weight's on the bit, and that's extremely important in the oil field. But with the new advances in technology on the water well rigs water well drill rigs you can do the same thing now on a lot of this equipment not all of them but a lot of them you can and especially with the ad uh, advancement in pdc bits uh, knowing your weight on the bit is 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 vitally important so that's uh, probably the three major factors that i see that uh, technology is bringing okay great and with this move from antiquated traditional equipment to digitized equipment how should today's contractor prepare for these changes? Well, I, I really probably at this point, Mike, we really wouldn't want to use the adjective um, antiquated simply because um, much of this equipment is still being manufactured today. Um, and the reason it's being manufactured today, the standard e traditional equipment is because there's a lot of the age force in the drilling industry is, is aging, as you well know. and while there's some younger generation coming in, they're not as as uh, as uh, plentiful as the older generation is, and so this equipment is still extremely efficient and um, can extreme, uh, still um, drill a, a very uh, efficient well today. So I don't want to use the term antiquated yet, but to go on to answer your question, one of the things that I would probably certainly encourage is that you need to get if you don't have some younger generation. Uh, with the desire to drill, try to recruit some of those simply because um, the younger generation has that skill set uh, and a computer savvy that uh, the older generation may not have. And there's a lot of people in the older generation that have adapted to technology, but um, the number of people uh, in the older generation is still not compared to what the younger generation is as far as being tech savvy. So I think it's important to have those people on staff so that so that they aren't quote unquote scared of the new technology and maybe can help those people make the in the older generation that's still drilling make that transition to the uh, to the new equipment. 